Hey, everyone, welcome back to the Brain Soul Success Show, where we take back our power. We're going to be talking about that today with my good friend, Vince. Here, Vince Kramer is amazing. I met Vince in a mastermind several years ago. Um, he was an airline pilot. He's a military veteran, but he's a transformational trainer and mentor. He's a clear consciousness channel. He brings unique experience to the world of transformation and purpose-driven growth. And through extensive research and study in leading-edge science and spirituality, he develops some methodologies and results, oriented activities really to produce breakthrough results in self-discovery and self-empowerment. I just love the work that you're doing. And I also love your story of how you got there. We're going to share that today. Wow. As a speaker and a guide and a best-selling author of Awakening Through Moments of Choice with his wife, Mary, and Mastering the Art of Success with Jack Canfield, he's been writing books, man. I just, I just, you know, we we're talking before we get on here. He's like, okay, I got two more in the cooker. <laughs> Vince's distinct combination of experience, education, and research really helps him develop these powerful talks, the workshops he does, the online trainings, and helping people find happiness and success and really living their life by design. And so he's the co-founder of Imagine Miracles, where he passionately believes everyone is unique and the creator of their own life. It is his desire to inspire and empower men, women, organizations, and families to find success and happiness by designing and creating a life fueled by their desires. Vince, I'm so excited to be with you today. This is awesome. Well, I love being with you. This is such a great opportunity. We we did this once before, and unfortunately, it got lost. So this is a a great opportunity to to tap into the the energy that moves between us and really help people make a difference. And I'm I'm gonna make an announcement here. This will probably be the last podcast that I'm on that somebody says. I'm the co-founder of Imagine Miracles. It will be the co-founder of Purpose, Purpose, Meaning, and Joy very soon. So oh. we're, we're rebranding because we want to step okay. fully into to what we're sharing with the world and how important it is for people to understand that. Oh, I like that because I know the work that you do, and that really does make sense. That's a beautiful title. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it so fun when we can rebrand and grow? Like as entrepreneurs, we're always growing. And as we're growing and learning, uh, you know, what we, it's, it shifts a little, doesn't it? Well, we, we yeah. get an opportunity to, with the interaction and the entrainment of energy with other people, we get an opportunity to grow and expand ourselves. And it's that growth and expansion that really needs to be shared. And I was a little resistant to make that change. I mean, it's, it takes mm -hmm. a lot of work to to rebrand your business. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't know how many things are out there in the world that have imagined miracles on it. But the the one thing that I want to happen is people are so important to me that when they go in the, their computer, they go to Google and they type in purpose, they find us mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. we want to help them see purpose in another way. We're, mm -hmm. we're not your normal purpose people. And I, I know we've talked about this in the past. I truly believe there's three parts of the purpose and, and we need to go beyond the why we need to find the who and the what also. Oh, I like the way you said that the who and the what also, yeah, you come at it from a little different angle. Explain that. Yeah. Well, explain that to us. It, it's, it's interesting because I, I've spent a lot of time in coaching and, and a in mm -hmm. programs where I was working to find my why. And I know you're going to ask me a question about that. So I'm not going to go into it right now. <laughs> but I, I was looking for my why. And what I found was that until you know the energy of who you are and what people feel from you mm -hmm. and, and who you're attracting by that essence that you're putting out, you really have no idea what the people need of your gifts and talents. Hmm. And okay. so the, the who is the quintessence, the essence, you mm -hmm. know, we shine our energy out, especially, especially, uh, and you help people do this. And, and I love to help people do this. When we take down that wall that we've got around our heart, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that we think is protecting us from mm -hmm. the world, but mm -hmm. it's actually just blocking our light from the world. When, mm -hmm. when we take that down and we shine that light out, all of a sudden we get to see who's being attracted to us. Who's looking for what we have to offer? Who's looking for what we've got to share with the world? And, and that's really the first step in discovering your purpose, because those people that are looking for you mm -hmm. can really help you see why you're here. Well, there's always that mirror, right? Mm -hmm. Like we learned in social psychology back in college, you know, exactly. there's always that mirror that does seem that does seem to happen. We're on the same page there because I call it getting back to, I, I feel like entrepreneurs do a lot of, take a lot of coaching classes, work with a lot of business coaches, and it isn't until they find 100% their soul truth. And it is about taking those heart walls down and getting back to 100% your soul truth where you really have this divine connection with yourself and with your, you know, your creator, whatever that is to you. Um, that you can shine your light in the world and then you're right. Then, then your why becomes more clear, bigger, exactly. you know, exactly. I, I, you know, I, I believe we bring a blueprint in for that life and, mm -hmm. and helping people find a blueprint is what Mary and I are all about. If you, if you find that blueprint, all of a sudden, every part of your life makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it, it raises our vibration, just knowing who we are. Yes. And then it raises it even further when we start living who we are. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've been so blessed, really, because I was given I was given like a wake up call. And I know that you were, too. And mm -hmm. we want to talk about that, you know, because airline pilot to transformational conscious channel. I mean, how, how did that happen? <laughs> right. You must have been working on this in the back in the back end somewhere. Since <laughs> since five years old, actually. actually. Okay. okay. At, at five, I told my grandmother I wanted to help people love themselves so they could love others. Wow. And and that truly sums up the three parts of, of my purpose. But uh, as everybody else, and this isn't just men, but uh, I think people can recognize and realize that it definitely happens for little boys, but I know it happens to little girls too. My grandfather was an influential person in my life mm -hmm. and he actually taught me how to be a man his way. Okay. And that was 1930s, 1940s way, right? Maybe, maybe even early 1950s way of being a man. And I did a good job of it. I've, I learned how to compete. I learned how to be the best at, at everything that I did. And um, I started that at about seven years old. And I was pretty ingrained in grandpa's way mm -hmm. by the time I was 17. And interestingly, my grandmother died when I was 17. And she brought me into her hospital room and got everybody else out of the room. And she said, you know, I want you to remember something that you told me when you were five years old. And wow. she told me that statement. Oh, wow. And you know what, Louise, I forgot all over again. And I'm I went crying. back to, <laughs> I went back to, to being grandpa's, grandpa's protege, if you will. Oh, and and wow. I didn't even really like the guy because of the way he treated me and the way he pushed me. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe it was because I wanted to be accepted by him that I lived my life the way he told me I needed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, then there were small wake up calls. We like to call the, the small ones conscious. You know, okay. I, I would be doing a job and it's like, why am I doing this? I'm not as happy as I know I should be. Or, uh, you know, yeah, I got a really great bank account, but, but I know there's something missing in my life. So the, we had those conscious wake up calls and we all have them. Mm -hmm. unfortunately we don't listen to them <laughs> or true. we only pay attention for a very short period of time and then that's when the big wake-up calls come you know like mm -hmm. like your illness was a, a really big wake-up call mm -hmm. we like to call them at uh, purpose meaning joy we like to call them crisis wake-ups yes they are they're like a big healing crisis that that transforms your life and you become a, almost a different person on the other side of that. 
Right, right. Yes. Um, I, I've got another story to show, share if you're interested about somebody that just had a really big wake up call recently. But, but my big wake ups, uh, the first one was 9-11. Louise. And, oh. and it was a big wake up call for a lot of people. Yes. Uh, and you were flying. Country. Were you fine? You were, you were a pilot then you were flying, right? Yes. Um, I was actually working at the training center. And I remember walking into a room for a meeting that day and everything getting strangely quiet in the room. There's a chapter in our book, Awakening Through Moments of Choice, that, that has this whole story in it. But I, I remember um, turning on the TV and seeing the second airplane hit the uh, Trade Center. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that really shook my world is I lost a good friend in Flight 93 in Pennsylvania. He was the captain of that airplane. Mm -hmm. And it, what got my attention uh, even beyond that was I flew Flight 93 one week prior. Oh, Wow. So if it would have been 9-4 instead of 9-11, it might have been me in that smoking hole in Pennsylvania. Mm. But but this is what happens when we have wake-up calls. Mm -hmm. we, we immediately start to rationalize. Well, that wouldn't have happened to me. I would have done a better job. And, and yes, my eyes were open for a, a, a big period of time. And I knew I wanted to be closer to the people I loved. I wanted to to give more of who I was in the world, but the window closed pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I just started following grandpa's rules again and boom, pressed on. Then another wake up call happened. It was, that was a couple of years later. It's 2003 United Airlines went bankrupt and mm -hmm. it was devastating. You know, a hundred thousand employees. I took a 60% pay cut. I didn't lose my job, but I took a 60% pay cut. Wow. I lost all my retirement and, you know, I started, okay, is this, is this how I want to live my life? What's really important to me? How do I want to show up in the world? And then reality set in and it's like, Vince, you lost your retirement and you took a big pay cut. And my dad's voice then kicked into my head. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're supposed to support your family, Vince. You need a retirement. If you don't have a retirement, you know, then what are you going to do when it's time to stop working? And, and the window closed again mm -hmm. to, to wake up. And what did I do? I went out and bought some pretzel stores, three, three Annie Ann's pretzel stores. That was going to be my retirement. And <laughs> okay. my, my ex-wife and I agreed, oh, we're going to work this together and everything's going to be great. And you know what? Dr. Atkins puts out a book and all of a sudden we've got this fairly popular book, actually one of the most popular books ever saying, don't eat carbs. <laughs> and, and the pretzel stores took a dive. Oh no. And oh. with the stress of it, my ex-wife said, I can't do this. I, I can't help with the business. And uh, I went into uh, truly survival mode, but also conquer mode that grandpa taught me. Mm -hmm. And I was working 95 hour weeks trying to keep the pretzel stores going, trying to keep bringing them back up, doing my full-time job at United. The, the good thing was I was working at the training center at the time. So I had a more regular job than what a, a normal airline pilot has. Mm -hmm. And push forward, push forward, push forward. Got the pretzel store sold. Right after they sold, I came home to my wife crying hysterically and she said she wasn't happy and wanted a divorce. Oh man, that's a big, oh, there's a lot of things in a row there. And that was yeah. the wake up call that got my attention. That's mm -hmm. the one that finally got me to look at what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And, and that wake up call uh, sent me in a couple directions. And, and that's another story. And, and I don't want to get into to that, but where it sent me was a place where I found what was missing in my life. Mm. And I realized it was me. Oh, beautiful. And then yeah. I set out on the journey to find out what that really meant. And that's where the work with finding the three parts of your purpose came from and, and how to live, bringing science and spirituality together all came from 
that first understanding that I was missing in my life. Right, right. What a beautiful wake up call. I'm sure it was a difficult time as you navigated through it, but you had that, you know, that wake up call that, that inspiration. How did you then find yourself? Uh, the, the journey started out by searching like everybody else does. Who's, who's got my answer? Mm-hmm. And uh, the first place I reached out was Jack Canfield, the mm-hmm. chicken soup for the soul guy. Um, I, I went through uh, one of Jack's year long programs. And, and the interesting thing about that is, so I was living by grandpa's rules. Right. No doubt in my mind, living by grandpa's rules and very successful. Don't get me wrong. Successful in the military, successful in the business world, successful monetarily, successful in many, many ways, but, but still knowing that there was something missing. Mm -hmm. Well, when I, when I found that I was the one, what was missing and I started to doing the work with, with Jack, what happened to me was I realized that um, I wanted to be like Jack and I wanted to okay. be like Jack because the five-year-old knew I was supposed to be like Jack, not because, uh, oh, because I, I'm going to go off track here a little bit and I apologize. I think so many of us get to a point in our life where uh, it's time for us to wake up. I mean, we all forget it's, it's necessity mm-hmm. that we all forget. But there's a time that non-physical part of us, our higher self, uh, shakes shakes the bed or shakes our shoulders and says it's time to wake up, and that's where that's where wake up calls come in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can believe it or not believe it, but um, I've seen it proven so many times that I I can't deny it. Yes, you can feel it in people. I can feel it when I'm working with people. Mm -hmm. It's like they're they're on this transition place, and they're like so ready you know, and, and I almost can see it for them before they can see it themselves because I'm kind of psychic, I guess. And I just go, Oh, dang, man, they're right on the cusp. And then when they don't say yes to making that change that they need to, to really do the work on themselves. Oh my gosh. I get so sad Mm -hmm. because I can feel it for them. Are you, does that happen to you? Exactly. Exactly. We, 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 we are the last ones to know it's time for us to wake up. (laughs) That's the interesting thing. And the other thing that makes me sad about somebody that doesn't step through that window when it's open, Uh I know the next wake up call is going to be a little more severe. The, the, The hammer gets a little bit bigger to wake you up. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. So that's kind of, oh, so what, what happened to me was um, I started doing like everybody else does. Okay. Who out there is feeling the way I want to feel? Who out there is doing doing what I want to do? Mm-hmm. And and we've been taught that. And it's getting better for the millennials, for the Gen Xers. I think it's much better. But for for our age group, we were taught find out who's doing what you want to do and emulate them. Exactly, exactly. That's what we were taught. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. I, okay. I started following a whole nother set of rules, Jack Canfield's. Okay. Okay. And, but lucky for me, I quickly realized that I was following another set of rules. And there, there was something going to be missing again because I was moving further and further out of my life again. Oh, that's a really interesting observation. I feel like you were so aware. Maybe you were aware at five. Your I was aware. I was much more your aware. Your grandma knew it. <laughs> wasn't forty. Yeah, yeah. That's for. Uh huh. For sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then, um, luckily, I had another wake up call, and, and this is something I think is important for everybody. All wake up calls aren't drastic or or painful. Right. So Mary, my current wife, as you know, came into my life. And she was a very, very positive wake up call for me Mm -hmm. because what I realized was I was, I was wanting to teach the old paradigm stuff. Let's learn about goals. Let's learn about visualization. Let's learn about um, how, how you can work down the, the goal path to, to be successful, to be happy, to enjoy your, enjoy your life. 
And what Mary opened me up to was some spirituality, mm-hmm. to, to see things in, in a, a different way, the connection between all of this, the importance mm-hmm. for each of us to live our purpose so others can. But I, I was very resistant to that, <laughs> extremely <laughs> resistant. So I started going to science books, trying to really, in my mind, prove what she was saying was wrong. I just wanted to feel good about me. And the deeper I got into the science books, the more I proved Mary right. And the deeper I got into science books. And and then I started realizing science and spirituality are walking hand in hand all the time. And we live, we truly, this is some science. Uh, Quantum physics tells us that we don't live in an either or world. Mm -hmm. We live in an and both world. And yes, when I started realizing, ah, if we can bring science and spirituality together, Mm -hmm. one, we can help people who are a little afraid or a little um, unhappy about the woo woo of spirituality, Mm -hmm. they can see it in the science. And those Mm -hmm. that don't feel they understand science or or believe that science is is just too black and white, they can see it in their spirituality. And bringing the two together then gives us an opportunity to, okay, well, what what if I did choose the difference I was going to make before I was born? What Mm -hmm. if I did choose the parents to help me be exactly who I was supposed to be to share all of this with the world? Mm-hmm. And and what I found was in understanding that I was able to go back and look at everything that happened in my life and find out exactly why it happened. What was the wow. gift that came from it? Mm-hmm. Where did I develop a new skill? Where did I develop a new ability? Mm-hmm. And then when I uncovered the reason I'm here on earth, what we call a divine intent, I was able to, ah, that's why I developed this skill. That's mm-hmm. why I learned this. So as an example, I'm truly here to, to teach and coach and, and bring people along the path of uncovering exactly why they're here. And then they need people like, like you to help them get past the, the belief systems that are locked into their brain. And, and they mm-hmm. need people like mm-hmm. Uh, some of the coaches that we've had to help them develop their business or, or Mm -hmm. to share their world, their their word in the world somehow or another. And I I could look back then and say, okay, well, that's why I joined the military and became an instructor and learned how to, to instruct and learn different learning styles and and, Mm -hmm. and different instructing styles. Oh, that's why it happened. That's why I had this position where I had to coach all the time and, and learn how to coach at, at a different level. And oh, that's why I love technology so much so I can so I can build my own web page to launch my book. And all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, that's what why all those problems happen. But also what I found out was, ah, oh, the divorce happened. Mm-hmm. So I could understand and learn what it was like to feel that that there was no hope, that that there there was a window open there. It wasn't about you're you're a victim in it. It happened for you, and that window opened so you could step through it. Mm -hmm. And and all of a sudden, all my life made sense. Uh Uh-huh. A lot of revelations there for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I believe the same, Vince, that, you know, we're on this path and that all the things that we go through, um, you know, I became a teacher. I mean, now I'm still teaching, really. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that then. I mean, I started teaching when I was six. I taught my best friend everything I knew and she skipped a grade, you know, I mean, <laughs> so we could be in the same class, you know, but I can look back and go, now I see the why of mm-hmm. why that happened and see the reasons. Right. Um, and your wake up call, you, you had an opportunity to see how, how the body can, can actually hold us back so much and how you can mm-hmm. heal your own body. That, that, that opened your world up to what you're sharing here. Absolutely. And then like you, um, brain soul to me is science spirituality. Mm-hmm. 
See, mm -hmm. so I blended science and spirituality, like physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energy field together, because just like the insights you got from Mary, you know, that helped you see the connections, that's what I started to see on my healing journey that was missing. You can, you know, you can go to a straight naturopath, functional medicine doctor, but if they're not working on the emotions too, and you're not working on the spiritual body, and you're not working in the energy field, you are missing the boat and it won't stick. Exactly. You exactly. know? So we always want it to, you know, to to stick. But you've had quite a few. I love how you describe your your wake up calls. When you're working with people now, give us an example of somebody. You said you had a, an example of somebody going through a wake up call. Yes, I I want to I want to bring in that we're always getting messages and promptings from mm -hmm. the the higher frequencies of who we are, mm -hmm. and if we don't pay attention to those message and promptings or we don't know to look for them, that they will show up in a way that we have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, examples of that is uh, there was a, a channeling. So I'm a clear conscious channel, as you shared, and we give a free channeling away every month. And, and we channel for people that uh, are interested in their individual personal channelings. And, and we shared a channeling with someone. And in sharing that channeling, um, they were told by the higher vibrations of their frequency, their energy stream, that, that it's time for you to open up to a new way. It's time for you to move beyond the materialism of the world mm -hmm. and start stepping into understanding it's bringing everybody together in, in what we call and in, in the energies that come through me call the we, we consciousness. We're mm -hmm. all here for each other type of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and the message was heard, but kind of left by the wayside. Okay. And there was a, a serious, serious medical problem that happened within eight weeks to get that person uh -huh. to start paying attention. Uh -huh. So we, we may get a disease. We mm -hmm. may have an accident. We may lose a close friend with a death. Mm -hmm. We may lose our job. Mm -hmm. We may take a pay cut. Mm -hmm. All of those, all of those things that happen, we have a tendency to believe they're happening to us. Mm -hmm. And I, I really want to encourage everybody who's listening to us that it's happening for us, but mm -hmm. I believe they're also happening because of us. That non-physical part of us is creating circumstances in front of us mm -hmm. to get us to pay attention to something. Yes. Yes. I like the way you put that. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that those are all those doorways and there's, it's like a doorway or either or a window, a window or a door opens through those difficult times that there are times of transformation because it's raising you up to a higher frequency to get closer to whatever your God divine connection is. Mm -hmm. And I see it as levels. So level, level one is sort of that victim. It's happening to you. The world around you is happening to you. You know, and that's a mindset thing too, as well as a belief pattern. Mm -hmm. And then the second level is more awareness. You're able to ask yourself good questions, you know, just like you're demonstrating here today. Mm -hmm. And then the, the third level is more as more empowerment. You're more empowered. But the fourth level is when you know that you have the tools that you can change your trajectory of your world around you. Listen intently to those little messages, follow them instinctively, quickly, and keep growing. Right. That's what I see as different mm -hmm. levels. And I was thinking about this too, even with my new, you know, my 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 new people coming into my mastermind, like they're like learning. They're like you know, the infants, they're like babies learning the beginning tools of the brain soul, and then then we take them through those levels, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that's what you're doing too. And you you know, and you've reached, and we can tell 
that you've you've reached that extraordinary, amazing empowerment level four level, or you wouldn't be able to channel and help the people the way you help them. Right, and it's all there. For, you know, there for all of us. And and uh, along the way, some of these things that are created for us, so we develop new skills. Um, yes, a, a pain a pain or a heartache or an ache of not answering your calling might send you to Louise's brain soul program Mm -hmm. and you're in brain soul success and you're learning all these techniques. Well, there you were sent there that, that non-physical part of you that knows Mm -hmm. sent you to Louise to learn this new skill. It might be a skill to help you, but it also might be a skill that you're going to use to help others too down down the road mm-hmm. and and all of these all of these situations that we had in our lives usually the ones that are the most say painful usually come giving us the biggest gift we learn we learn something really mm-hmm. big from it that we're going to be able to use down the road but i also don't want to take away from you chose to come to this earth Mm -hmm. to make this difference. So you brought some things with you that you don't have to learn. They're just naturally you. And you just need the circumstance in front of you to let those things bubble to the surface. So it's not just the things that you've learned. You, You truly brought this reason. So there's some things about you that nobody else has. So we're truly mm-hmm. unique. We're truly special. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the most important thing for everybody to realize is when, when, you, when you wake up and you decide, I want to help people in this way, first of all, you don't need to even maybe change jobs or start a business. So many of us think, oh, I have to start a business mm-hmm. and then I'm going to be a healer or I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that. And I'm I'm not discouraging anybody from that path, mm-hmm. but when you do, don't go looking for somebody to emulate. Don't go to a program to learn somebody else's way. Mm-hmm. Go to learn how you can best serve yourself and then find your way. Because mm-hmm. if the world was full of Louises or the world was full of Vince's, Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people out there that aren't going to find what they need to step fully into who they are. Yes. So it's so important for you to find your talents. So important for you mm-hmm. to take the gifts that you develop and bring them together and be your unique self. That was, thank you for sharing it that way. Um, that's my belief system too, is really allowing the gifts, like your gifts to shine you know, it's really funny when I first started neurobiofeedback like years ago, like 20 something years ago, I was working with dyslexic and ADHD kids. And uh, um, I put that affirmation or intention in the biofeedback device for a little guy I was working with that I allow my gifts to shine. And I, and I thought, oh, wow. And you know what? He was like, he allowed his gifts to shine within three months. He was more social. He told me he had a girlfriend. He went through those first like reading books really quickly. Um, he ended up going into the military. His brother got a hundred percent on the ACT test. These little guys were really smart, like twice gifted, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Did they, they were my teachers. Right. Right. You know, right. so I learned through that as much as I helped them. Mm-hmm. But I also like what you said, Vince, and for everybody out there listening, there are people here who are like, you know, listening and they're thinking and toying with, hey, do I want to start a business? What do I want to do with this? Um, and like Vince said, just dive in and help people. You don't have to call it anything yet. You don't have to have a website yet. You don't need to do anything like that. Use your talents and your gifts to help people and it will evolve. It'll start to become more and more clear. When, when. When you find the reason you're here, when you find that divine intent, Mm -hmm. mine is to raise the vibration of the world towards joy. When you find that divine intent, you can look at, look at life and say, where can I bring joy to the world in this? And I'll, I'll share a really good story. When I, when I first uncovered this and it was a, it was a path for me to, to learn the different 
ways to uncover and the different things to uncover. Uh, some of it came in through those, those downloads I was getting from the higher vibrations. And when I first uncovered, ra uh, raise the vibration of the world towards joy. And the first thing I thought of was, okay, I've got to quit my job. I've got to start this business. I've, I've got to, to put these programs together to get everybody in alignment with finding their joy and, and sharing their joy. And this is the advantage of tapping into guidance in, in, in the way that I've been able to. And mm -hmm. we teach everybody how to tap into your own guidance mm -hmm. in a way that you can't deny it's coming. So it's not, oh, well, that's you, Vince. But so this, this guidance would come into me and I would have these conversations with the guidance in my head. And when I was coming up with this, okay, I got to quit my job. The guidance came in and said, Vince, every time you land an airplane and you get out of the cockpit and you stand in the doorway and you look at each person in the eyes when they're leaving your airplane mm -hmm. and you smile at them and you let them feel who you are and you say thank you and you really mean thank you mm -hmm. as they're leaving, you are bringing joy to the world. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And that open my eyes to uncover your divine intent, uncover that reason and start living it in everything you do. And if it's time for you or you're supposed to open a business, the messages will come. Exactly. Yes. But, but don't, don't jump into something to get it started because, oh, I know I need to do something until you really know what you're here to bring to the world. Mm -hmm. because you might be taking yourself down a path that you don't want to go down. Right. Or it might end up being the right path, but how much work do you have to do or how much, how many lessons and how many wake up calls <laughs> along the way to get that business to be living fully who you are? Yes, absolutely. What a great message. Really step into your own power, right? And live who you live, who you are, allow the gift of you, to shine. One of my teachers said this, I'll never forget it. Um, she said, if you're not using your gift in the world, you're dishonoring God, the divine, whatever that higher power is for you. And, and one of the benefits, Louise, from it, when you're doing the things you're good at and the things that you enjoy doing, and it's really the combination, I'm good at it and I enjoy doing, yes. that's really passion. Yes. And yes. when, when you're doing that, you can't help but be in a high vibration. So true. And let's look at the law of attraction, right? You need to be aligned with what it is that you want to attract. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're in a high vibration because you're doing what you're good at and enjoy doing, you're going to attract a life and the people in your life that's going to empower you to do whatever it is you want to do. That's so true. I love my people. <laughs> I love being here with you. Oh my gosh. Um, I know you're saying the same thing. You and Mary are doing such beautiful work in the world and um, love the fact that your book is getting out there too. I mean, like, yeah, you're doing some really good, good work in the world. Hey, let's turn the table for a minute and just ask some personal questions. So when you're not working and coaching and helping people and channeling, um, what does Vince like to do in his personal time? Well, I love to travel and I love my grandchildren. Awesome. So I think I think that's the the biggest uh, biggest pull for me. But when you find who you are, Louise, mm -hmm. sometimes just doing the things that I'm doing is the place I want to be. It's yes. not it's not work. I mean, I I love sports. I love the outdoors. But you know what? I'll give up going to a sporting event or I'll give up going to to play sports or, or taking a hike to be on a coaching call with somebody anytime. Yes. Anytime I have a chance to open a heart and anytime I have a chance to bring joy to somebody's life, that's that's where I'd rather be. Yes. And it shows and I can see you're glowing. It's really, really awesome. We're very aligned that way. I mm -hmm. the same. The same, you know, it's just my passion. 
It it's is. my passion. So, you know, you, you out there listening, our listeners, you know, you have beautiful people here to connect with on the brain soul success show. And we want to thank Vince for the opportunity to be with him today. I just love you, Vince. I love you and Mary so much. And I'm so, so excited to see all the good things happening in your life and how many people you're touching. Thank you. That, tr that truly is a gift. You're bringing your gift to the world in a beautiful way. And you know, we and love to you. your grandkids too. We were talking about that before we hopped on the recording. <laughs> yes. I, I shared with Louise before we started that uh, my granddaughter uh, heard somebody talking negatively and she's only five years old. She'll be six in, in just a month. And she first chance she got, she leaned into me and she said, grandpa, does she really want to be talking that way? So she already knows vibration. <laughs> she already knows how, how important it is for us to keep our vibration up. Yes. Yes. So maybe the message here too is listen to the younger people. Of listen course. to the kiddos. <laughs> yes. And congratulations on your new grandbaby. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're so excited. Oh, it's been such a gift to be with you today. If you're going to leave us with one tip, what would it be? You truly are unique and special. And it's important for you to find that blueprint that you brought in for life and understand how people feel you understand all of the gift that you have to bring it, that Louise shared is so important to share. And what difference are you meant to make in the world? Not what do you do for people or not what you do for yourself or not even what you do in your job, but when you do those things, what's the difference it makes in the world? That will open you up to making decisions in, in such a fast and easy way to really take you down the journey that you chose to be here with. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much, Vince. Hey, how can we get um, a hold of you or uh, of your book? Tell us about that. I'm going to make it real easy. Okay. And, and this will be the very first time I get to say it this way. Okay. <laughs> if you go to Purpose Meaning Joy... No spaces, no dots, no dashes, nothing. PurposeMeaningJoy.com forward slash Louise. Perfect. Awesome. There, there's an opportunity for some free stuff for, for you. Uh, what we call your unique purpose blueprint to help you start finding those three parts of, of your unique purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, how to get the book, how to learn more about Mary and Vince. Uh, just an opportunity to connect because we're all about community and we believe if we give you an opportunity to move further into who you are, you're going to want to be around people like you. And that's what we're trying to form in these communities that we're building. Nice. Very nice. Very good. Well, again, thank you so much for being with us today. It was such a delight. Um, check that, that link out, everyone. Um, connect with Vince and Mary here. And uh, remember, everyone, follow your heart, but take your brain with you.